Well, hi, thanks for joining me here in my shop today. <clears throat> uh, today I'm going to be just focused on finding out how and why this thing gave me a pretty good shock uh, yesterday. Yesterday, day before yesterday. And uh, <clears throat> sort out what it is about it. I, I think there must be something wrong here for me to have gotten a shock of it. Correct whatever it is or become aware of whatever it is about this machine that makes it a little bit dangerous and uh, try to take steps to uh, to ameliorate it. That's a fancy word for fix it. So let's start by taking a look at the schematic for this. What I'm curious about is how is the power cord side of things uh, taken care of? Is there is there maybe a capacitor to, that runs from, from one of these lines to the chassis, something like that? And are there any other connections that are made to the chassis and, and I remember there are I remember distinctly this ground connection here is connected to the to this uh, plate deck top whatever <laughs> of course when you screw it all together whatever is connected to this panel is connected to the to the box so um, now I think the kind of shock I got off this was a 60 cycle power line shock through some kind of resistive uh, element. Now, I mean, you know, the shock only lasted a moment. It, it involved the kind of contacts I was making it when, it when I got it. Uh, I really can't make a judgment as a human being over what it was I really touched. Sure seemed to me to be something, something like, I don't know, 80 volts, something like that. And uh, it, I don't think it was a full 120 volts with the, uh, you know, Niagara Falls behind it. I, I don't think that's what it was. I think I would have jumped an awful lot more. <clears throat> but I'm concerned that what I got was maybe enough to, to to end my days. And I certainly don't want to experience that again. And so let's let's take a look. Let's stop talking, Jen. Let's get something on the screen here we can look at. Okay, so this is the uh, schematic, obviously, for the tube tester. And the area we want to check out is all of this down here very carefully and anything else that shows a symbol like this one here a ground symbol let's zoom in a little bit and we'll look at the uh, we'll start by looking at the plug here <coughs> excuse me so there's the fuse lamp let's see so I'm looking for any ground symbols anything funny in here I mean a quick glance I don't see anything there's the adjustment uh, for the line voltage. Look, it's right off one of the wires. So this is the uh, slide switch. This is the on, off, and uh, life slide switch. So the life, you can see what the life is doing now. You can see the tap in the primary here. And I'm going to guess, uh, in regular mode, you're on this outside tap here. And when you put it into life mode, you start using this 100 tap. You're losing about 10% of the line voltage supply to the unit. Uh, <coughs> I, I don't see anywhere where this is in contact with the chassis. Now, so I've got some lines coming up here, the other primary for the other transformer. These are these are big, physically big transformers, very busy transformers. I don't see anything. I see no way that the power line is connected to the uh, chassis, to, to, to one of these guys. <clears throat> hmm. So that leaves me a little bit uh, disturbed now in the, because, you know, how did I get a lift off it? Number two, uh, it's possible these big transformers are acting like capacitors themselves. And it's through these big transformers and their capacitance that some uh, pressure, electricity, charge, whatever you want to call it, from here, from the power line, is making it onto this. If that's the case, then I, I would think rotating this plug will have zero effect on the voltage that might appear here. That's what I would think. 
There's other possibilities are leaks to the to the uh, chassis from anything like maybe this control somehow is 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 leaking onto the chassis this light bulb fixture i don't know those are long shots okay let's go back and play around with the machine here a little bit now the thing about this is is i've been using this uh, machine i've been using it with my other machines i have another one that has a metal cabinet not unlike this I've had them side by side. I had my hands all over these things and nothing has happened until that fateful moment on the other video. Shame on me. You know, I got that shot partially because I wasn't following the two-hand rule, which is don't have two hands, which is only have one hand, right? The hip pocket rule, put your hand in your pocket. You know, I'm pretty good at that at times, taking my free hand, which is usually my left hand, and sticking it behind my back while I'm working. And I, I do these things. It's just if you're dependent upon procedures like that, sooner or later, it's it, you're going to make a mistake. Sooner or later, something's going to happen. So what should we do here? Let's plug this guy in and check him right away. So it's just a two-prong plug going right into a regular three-prong type outlet there. Now, without turning it on, we're going to hunt around for some, some voltage here. We're not going to use me to do it. We're going to use the meter. Okay, chassis to good, good height. Oh, well, any one of my pieces of equipment now are grounded. So you see an exciting six volts there. So uh, I don't think that's what got me. Another concern I have is that it seemed to be dependent upon the position of the test switch, which really scares me. It starts to suggest that there's a leak out of somewhere else in here getting onto this chassis. Maybe my shock was with uh, 100 volts DC or something. So uh, I'm going to reverse the plug now. And we'll see what we got. It's a pretty low number. I got a I got a low number of the first reading, which kind of suggests to me the idea of the transformers being the capacitive link between the line coming in and this cabinet. Probably not the case. Otherwise, I think I would see 60 there all the time. <coughs> oh yeah, ground. Forgetting it, just touch over here anywhere. Like oh my gosh, look at that. 100 big ones. Saw that right after the accident when I was flipping around doing a few quick tests. 100 volts AC. Unit is switched off. Uh, not, not that that should make any difference, but I'm not beyond just trying stuff. <laughs> okay, let's clip this meter on the uh, unit here. So I don't have to hold the leads while we flip all kinds of switches. I really don't know what to make what just happened there. <laughs> now I'm nervous about grabbing this thing. Of course, I'm all isolated from everything, he says. I, I, I don't plan to get a shock in this video <laughs> at any point. That's my plan, all right? Now I want to put this onto ground. I think I can very cleverly do it with this. There we are. You can see that, eh? Maybe I can... A little hard to defeat the light. Okay. Still there. Didn't it come? I thought, I thought it went away when I did this. Yeah, that's why I wanted to use clip leads. That ah, makes a little more... Well, I was just going to say it makes a little more sense, but... Just doing random stuff here. Does any of anything does anything. So 
So what this is telling me right now is that if I put my hand on a grounded instrument, of which I have many more now in my shop, and put my hand on this, you will see me repeat exactly what happened to me uh, before. So this thing is sitting here dangerous right now. Um, it would be interesting to know how much power we can pull out of that. If I had a nice little light bulb handy, we could find out pretty quick. If I had a nice little light bulb handy, but I don't. Darn it. Darn it, don't I have one? I thought I had one. Well, it's buried away somewhere. I mean, we won't try that, but I would actually hook up a light bulb between the cabinet and, uh, like a small, uh, you know, 10 watt light bulb. <coughs> Between the cabinet and ground and see if the light comes on and if it did holy smokes I think if the light were to come on it would only happen if we were able to read 120 here or the uh, supply voltage so <coughs> so uh, where is this leading me it's not leading me too far yet Turn the unit on and see what happens. With the switch open, the energy from the power line, even with the switch open, still gets all the way through everything, right back to the other side of the switch. So turning things off doesn't necessarily uh, solve or ensure that you can't have a case voltage. No, not at all. In fact, it's possible for some of these things where uh, when you turn them on, you won't read the case voltage, and when you turn them off, you will. Maybe not this kind of machine because it has a big transformer in it. Okay, just going slow here, trying to allow some ideas to pop in my head. Of course, I don't have a tube plugged in, so I'm not, I haven't got this exactly the way it was. <clears throat> Let's switch it on here, and we'll see what happens. Okay, baby's on. Oh, when when this when did that jump? Uh, <laughs> what is that telling me? That's th certainly a little more scary. Flip it. Here, flip, flip the plug. And we're going to get a very low voltage now. So this is clearly indicating we have a fairly strong leak on one side of the power line onto the chassis here. Somehow, leak maybe isn't quite the right word. We got a 50 50 chance every time you plug this in right now of getting this thing with. 5 volts on it, who only cows would care about, or 114 volts on it. 50-50 chance. Uh, let's fill up around with some more switches. So, put this on test. Okay, that's good. I, I don't want to see this change, or it's just going to make it even more. Even more. So this is changing it. I don't know if you, I doubt you can hear this in the microphone, but as I increase the, this is the line adjust control upwards, you get more and more juice coming in here. This thing hums louder and louder. Uh, turn this right to minimum almost nothing here, so that's kind of interesting. Not a hundred percent sure what to make of that, but it might be telling us which side of this control the leaking effect is on. I don't know. don't know what to make of that. Let's it back where it's supposed to be. Roughly. Um, a few other switches here to throw. I have it set up in a bit of an unusual mode right now in which you uh, 
instead of the tube tester just energizing the tube, some of the energy can be directed through to these terminals. And then you can either make current measurements or voltage measurements off these terminals. This tester has an unusual way of doing it. It has what's called a connect line in it. The connect line, as I understand it, is a wire which attaches to number 8 on every one of these controls. I'm not 100% sure of this, but this is what I think it is. And two of these controls have nothing to do with the vacuum tube. These two controls are hooked up to this grid terminal and the plate terminal. So you're selecting with these controls what goes on these terminals. <clears throat> so you take the element you're interested in, maybe the plate. You figure out by looking in the manual which one of these is the appropriate pin. This is pin 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. You then rotate the appropriate pin control and the plate control down to the connect wire position, which is number 8. The plate is now connected to, I think it's this one, something like that is going on. So, so the bottom line is this is adjusted in a certain way right now, which is not the normal tube testing way. I just have to rotate this knob off. We're still watching this voltage. Let's put the higher voltage there. Rotate the plug again. Let's see what happens when we take it off this connect line. Nothing. Nothing. I don't even have a tube plugged in actually. So, uh, nothing. Okay, it was a bit of a long shot. So now the machine is set up more like it would be for a regular a GM or EM test. Nothing special going on except it's ready to, to send me through the roof. 112 volts. The actual line voltage in here, uh, you know what, I don't have a meter to, to read it without actually sticking one into the outlet. <laughs> uh, so I won't bother doing that, but 112. I think that's the full shot. I think I do have to do that. Let's, let's see if we can figure out what the line voltage is. No, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take this guy out of his cabinet get them on the bench and see if the same things are taking place. It's possible having put this into the cabinet something is sticking out and has touched the metal the metal box. So to do that safely now, because this guy's a danger, I gotta unplug him. Okay. Danger is gone. Well, I'm gonna lift this guy out of his box. Anything weird going on in this box? It gives me a chance to tighten up the foot. I had one foot loose on this guy. There. No, there's absolutely nothing funny going on in here. It's a totally humorless metal box. Now, before I, I fiddle around here, is there any wire sticking out? Is there anything sticking out anywhere? Or is there anything that is really close? Uh, the metal metal box, the metal box wall is actually on the outside here. It folds over to engage the screw holes, so it's, it's way out here. Certainly don't see a thing. Um, although you know what, you know what's close. I'll tell you what's close here. What's close is these. Pretty close. You know, all these are all nicely insulated here. Let me turn this a little further. These are all nicely insulated, but not these top terminals. But I, I just don't think the box could contact it because the, the, the box is hitting these. If anything, it would be hitting these. It's not hitting any of this, in fact. No short there. I, I just don't think I'm going to find anything, but i got to look. So looking down around here, it's just nothing. It's just nothing sticking out. 
So the only contact with the big metal box is the actual frame of this. Well, what about sticking down, hitting the bottom? What about falling down? Like a loose wire that falls down. There's nothing loose in here. So that tells me that we should see all the same stuff just on this thing without the big box. I don't think that's a surprising revelation, but let's let's check it out and see. We'll come back up. A little unstable with short leads. Okay, here we go. Plugged in, turned on, and that's what we get. Same thing, of course. Turn it off. Free hand here. This, this drops to 105. I, I find that kind of interesting, but oof, I'm trying to explain that. I can't explain it. Not, not yet, anyway. So this guy is one it looks to me like a real danger here. Um, 114 volts. Uh, but hey, you know what? I said I couldn't uh, test it this to see if a uh, light, if it would light a light bulb. But I do have, I do have a low impedance meter. Provided I can find it, let's just take a quick look here. Okay, I got this low impedance meter. I'm going to make the same measurement. If there's no power behind that voltage, like really no power, it, it won't even move this meter up. It takes nothing to make make this guy work. It takes a little bit of something to make this this one here work. 150 volts AC. Sit somewhere. <laughs> this is not it. This is not it. I got something for you here. Hundred and fifty volts full scale. Let's keep this on. It'll help me stay mindful of what's happening here. One hundred volts. That should be about well, it should be over here somewhere. So I think the thing the thing that's actually more interesting to note is what happens on the other meter. So that, that, that fairly high voltage of 104 volts just about disappears from simply hooking up this meter as a load. Now this meter is telling me not 150 volts, it's telling me, let's see, about 40, uh, uh, 15, 15 to 20, and this is showing, interesting, this is showing 18. So they're in agreement. Chances are, when I got the shock off this, assuming this is the scenario, then when I touched it, as I was getting the shock, the voltage on this thing had bled down. A bad term to use, Jim. <laughs> had come down. Uh, with, with me as a load. Yeah, I'm pretending to be the meter here. Actually, I wasn't even pretending. I really was the meter. So this tells me the voltage that's getting on to here is coming through a, a high impedance circuit of some sort. What that tells me, and this is what I, I really have been after, is uh, is it safe to put a three wire, three prong plug on this and connect the ground wire to the chassis? Or will I be setting up a scenario where I'm shorting out the power line? I plug it in, boom, 
And the answer is uh, no. Uh, there's a high impedance connection from the line voltage somehow through here uh, to the frame and I can dissipate it or consume it, I'm not sure what the right word is, by simply putting a ground on there. It will disappear. Same thing I've been doing to all my pieces of equipment. Exactly the same thing. No worry that there's a solid short or connection between the power line and this frame. Oh my god, they would be crazy to do that on purpose, but it, you know, things can happen by accident. Somebody could have innocently re rewired this at some point, uh, thinking they're doing something good. I'm capable of making those kinds of mistakes. So it's the name of the game here is three prong plug. Safety problem resolved permanently for this guy. Well, I got to go find a wire. Okay, so here's the cord I'm going to put on. You can see it's still a little stiff, a little cold in my garage. So <laughs> put that guy on there. It's got three conductors, of course. To put it through here, let's just make sure I'm not stupid. Pull the plug out. There it is. Actually, that doesn't make sure I'm not stupid at all. That just makes sure I didn't do something stupid at that moment. I continue to be stupid. Okay. So, take a look at this arrangement here. Wow, not much to that. Just, just, just comes in, solders there, and solders up there. It's not, it's not really strain relief in any kind of good way. wondering if this is where the leak occurs, right here. Hmm. It's just a little bit of insulation in here, keeping the line voltage from making it down to the chassis. You should test that. Why don't we test that just to, uh, you know, for the sake of knowledge here. Is that the problem? Clipping the meter back onto the case. And I'm going to plug this back in. There we are. Looking for the big one. There it is, 106 this time. Hey, it's a little bit different. And now I'm going to wiggle that from the end of a lawn stick. And watch this, see what happens here. If this does something, I, I'd be amazed but I've been amazed before. Looking for a pretty dramatic change here, nothing, nothing small. Got another idea. I take the light bulb right out of there, see what happens. Here's another device right on the power line, bolted up onto the onto the uh, frame. So if there's leaks in here, you can get a little bit of energy onto this shell and then onto the frame. But uh, if 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 by some chance this light bulb is in series with this thing, taking a light bulb out might might break this voltage. Let's see. Or I'm just going to raise even more questions. I'm going to spend more time fiddling around. Yeah. Power cord's out. Let's get the light bulb out of here. Wow. <laughs> it's really in there. Yeah, if this thing wasn't leaking before, it'll be leaking by the time I'm done this. Let's see. Oh my gosh, I can't do it. I can't do it. Lights out. Clamp this back down a little bit. The light out, uh, it's really like another switch has been opened on the power line. Let's see what we got. Okay, that way is 6 volts, this way is quite different. 
quite different. Well, okay. Uh, I don't know how conclusive this really is. Let me pull the plug out before I forget. I think that is kind of indicating that the leak really is coming uh, from uh, from the power line through something like like this control. I don't think I want to investigate this any further, though. The amount of power being drawn by my little meter there, uh, which was causing the drop in voltage, indicates a pretty high impedance leak. GE number 81. So even though that leak will be kind of activated when I put in the green wire, in other words, that, that, that leak will result in a steady current flow, some sort, tiny current flow, it would be tiny. It would be a tiny current flow. light bulb shoved right up into the hole here this time. Oh my gosh, that must be a nut. Okay. Okay, grabbed an old computer power cord, which I've managed to keep quite a few. We're going to want this to come through this hole here. Oh yeah, it's going to fit perfectly. Fantastic. Okay, let's keep it out here for now. I've got to split the wires this distance. And i got to make a determination where I want to attach the, uh, the ground terminal. And I think there's an opportunity right here. I think this is a ground terminal right here. Fantastic. What luck. Right where you need it. Okay, so that means the longest piece I need is like that. Stripping back from about here. done this many 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 times so you see me cutting right at the wire <laughs> I'm being pretty careful here okay now we put a little bend in it and just nip at it a little bit here it should split right open there it goes hopefully I'm not nicking the wires inside we can bend it here here, <clears throat> we can pull it off. If you pull on plant on insulation like this, if you try to pull this off, as you pull it, it stretches thinner, necks down, and grabs the wire. If you push, as counterintuitive as it is, if you try to push it off, you bunch up the insulation, its diameter opens up a bit and it comes off. Is he lying? Let's see. It's a long piece here. I'm not lying, but I may not work on a piece this long. <laughs> Hello, Peanut. It's a bit of a long piece. It's better to try something and then explain it afterwards, because if it doesn't work, you don't need to explain it. If there was any kind of attempt to apply magic to what you were doing, it's coming. Oh, I smoked. There we go. Wow, that was tough. Okay, nice, nice flexible wires. Perfect. at this point. Man alive, I broke myself into a sweat doing that. That's too much effort. I gotta find better ways of doing things. This is coming through the grommet pretty tight but you can still tug it back. So we're gonna want to lock this here 
somehow. And it would be good to lock it against something solid. Well, one possibility is to use the ground wire that way. Bring this up like this. Fold it back and attach the ground wire tight. So this cord is going to get worked a lot. Every time I bring this out, I'm going to work it. Just like the other cord. The other cord was the same way. Worse, really. I'm surrounded by cats here in my shop. Yeah, they got bored. They're leaving. Now, other options. I got a fair bit of cord here. No reason why I can't bring a lot in. And do what with it? That's a good thing to hook up to. This bracket would be. Bend the bracket up a little bit. How's that going to help? I don't know. I don't like that. There's nothing here to strap it to. You can strap it to this um, terminal strip, but these aren't mechanically strong, so you really don't want to do that. You really don't want to do that ground wire hold it in there thing, not to a terminal strip. Wow, not a lot of options here. A little surprised. Gotta be something. wires that's not a good idea that's for sure this bracket is the best idea It's not good either. Okay, I gotta come up with something here. I'm stuck. Well, I think my only option is to uh, strain relief this cable onto this bracket. I don't, I don't think I have any, any other real, real options here. Let's get it under this wire. Oh, I don't need all of them under there. But yeah, yeah, I do. I do, I do, I do. So today I'm off to see a, a collection of tubes somebody wants to sell to me and uh, the last minute they mentioned they've also got 15 radios. <laughs> so, so I'm off to today to go and check that out. Maybe the proud owner of 15 radios after today. So I, that's as good as it's going to get. Bend this bracket up a little bit. You kind of get under it a little bit too. Let's go up a little higher. Actually, getting under it's no good. Ay, 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 it's not long enough. What I want to do is I want to fix the stiff part with the insulation here and then have the floppy wires run from there. I gotta cut more, more of this off. Let's pull it right out before I pull the whole uh, shooting match on the floor. Let's go more. 
about there. All I'm doing here is just trying to maybe cut 30, 40, 50 percent of the way through the outside jacket here and more or less score it. And bend it. With some luck it'll split already. Maybe not. And lots of tension on it. Just nick it a little bit. It'll just split open. Just like that. Good. Okay, back in you go. I did give some thought about relocating this power cord entirely from coming in through the top, like it is, to coming out the back of a box or something of that sort. And I decided to leave it uh, in its original state. Good reasons for having a cord come in like this. Settle for that. Just moves around a little bit. Looks like this isn't tight enough. pick your tube tester up by the power cord. Okay, black and white. Now, there's another decision to make. So, this cord will go in... Oh my god. <laughs> I, I, okay, so... Oh, I've done a stupid thing. So I cut this end off. You know, I never looked at the other end of this cord till just now. Oh, son of a gun, it's an extension cord. I didn't want to... Oh. <laughs> you see, if there's any way to make a mistake, and you need somebody to find it, I'm your man. I can find every mistake in the book. Oh, my gosh. What? Okay, but anyway, we worked out the whole scenario here. I just got to get another, another cord, and I cut my extension. Ah. Okay, okay. Okay, wire number two. Just, just, just. Yes, there's a plug on the end. Yes. white really don't matter at this point. They're basically just going to the primary of uh, two transformers. Primaries of two transformers. So one we're going to put up here. 
where it's supposed to go. out. on here. wild strands. It doesn't much matter with the ground connection, I suppose. Black wire is going down here. Okay. 
Someone's at my door. Okay, I was just confirming my trip to uh, see these tubes, vacuum tubes. Okay, let's see if we can get that out of there. Did I nip it already? I think I did. at all the solder yet. It's just it's really hard to heat this guy up. There it goes. There it goes. Wow. There's so much metal here, right? It's just draining away the heat as fast as my little soldering iron can pump it in there. Good. Whoops. Okay, so all these sudden things are evidence that I'm rushing now because uh, I've got to get going. So, uh, so you just start rushing. time to heat that up. It's going to stay hot a long time too. Burn your fingers. Burn my fingers. There we go. So th this, uh, doing this kind of thing improves the safety of a machine like this a lot. But it has to be done carefully in case there's an internal problem in the first place. I really need to understand why and how you've got uh, the voltage on the cabinet, of whatever it is you're dealing with on the case, whatever it is you're dealing with. Did I ever figure it out exactly here? I don't think so. I, I don't think I know 100% how that happened. But I'm pretty sure I have 100% solved it. Okay, I got time to make one quick test of this now. Okay, so. First, first test is going to be a little inconclusive. I'm going to plug it into my. into my isolation transformer uh, without a ground prong connection. Okay, even though that looks like a three prong plug, nope, it prong misses the outlet completely. It's a two prong outlet. It's in case the authorities come in my shop, I can say, look, no, no, I'm using three prong plugs, don't worry. <laughs> so all this is gonna prove to me is that I haven't put a short circuit in here. Oh my god, if I've done that, this will be the last video I make. So we're just going to apply power. Good. No lights. Power off. Power on. Power on. Lights. Good. That's good. Okay. But nothing too terrible. Full power. Get the voltmeter out. Where's my voltmeter? Let's see what we got now. other end of this <laughs> right because I don't have the ground pin in well now it's doing the nice you know half of 120 
Didn't do that before. That's okay though. That's, that's the kind of voltage you expect to see on the case of uh, something uh, that is picking up its charge through some high impedance thing like a capacitor or something like that. I don't think there's a problem here, but you see the next step is to plug it right into the house outlet and then explain to my wife why the lights went out. Okay, so I've, I've explained that to her before. <laughs> so, no, I'm only kidding. You don't like to be dependent upon your big house protective devices here. Oh, yeah. Just incidentally, when I plug it in here, I have a fuse in line here. There's a fuse there. A couple amps. So if I were to plug something in that had a, a terrible problem with it, it would pop that fuse. Along with turning the lights on. Okay, we're going into an outlet. Video still rolling? Yep. Okay, we're we're good. Let's get out the voltmeter again. Now we're really gonna find out what's on this case. Should be nothing. Should be absolutely nothing. Nothing. <laughs> That's the worst on-off switch I've ever seen. Just horrid. There we are though. Nothing. I'm safe. Double checking, ground connected. Beautiful. Let's just let's just go right on to an absolutely certain ground here. Once and for all. Be sure. It's zero. It's a zero. Of course. It has to be zero now. Good. That's it. Project over. Done. Time to go see somebody else's tubes. See what he wants me to pay him. Okay, power off. Excellent. Feeling good. This guy will never shock me again. Never, 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 never. Never, ever again. Okay, hey, thanks a lot for watching. And uh, I'm going to get back to working on the uh, A23 radio. That's my plan.